What is up my fellow and not? Let's talk about Chaste 3 and if it is safe for men to consume. You might know it as something that can lower your prolactin and in certain doses actually increase your prolactin. It's also known as Vitex, so I'm going to refer to Vitex from now on. Let's dive in. I want to address the effect of a Vitex on a testosterone. And so the first study is Vitex leaf water extract on cadmium poisoned rats. Now keep in mind that when you buy Vitex at the store, it's very often just Vitex berry. It's the fruit. So when they use Vitex leaf, it will give different results because the compounds in the leaf is going to be different from the flower and also the berry. All right, so it increases testicular cholesterol and glycogen. So as you can see, like cadmium and then the cadmium treated animals were then also treated with a Vitex. And the testicular cholesterol massively increased, which is very important because your body is creating testosterone from the testicular cholesterol. And then also glycogen massively increased, which is very important because glycogen is used to create energy, which is important for testosterone and fertility. So it increases over baseline levels, cholesterol and glycogen, which is really good. So it also increases antioxidant defense enzymes and lowers oxidative stress. So this was catalase, which detoxifies the free radical called hydrogen peroxide. It normalizes those levels. Red reduced glutathione increases it over baseline. Superoxide dismutase increases it over baseline. Superoxide dismutase is the free radical called superoxide. And then we have this MDA concentrations, which is a marker of lipid peroxidation and inflammation. So it normalizes it. It's very good for cleansing, getting rid of free radicals and lowering inflammation. It's also been shown to increase testicular size. Cadmium reduced it, which was then increased by Vitex consumption. And then lastly, it increases LH and testosterone, or at least normalizes it. So it normalizes the LH when you use cadmium, LH tanks. Using the Vitex then increases LH or normalizes it and testosterone then went over baseline. So there's a possibility that the Vitex could increase testosterone in non-cadmium poisoned humans as well. Then we have another study, Vitex berry ethanol extract increases LH and progesterone in female rats. So the previous one was the leaf has been shown to be effective and then we have the berry. So when you buy a Vitex berry it's not necessarily an ethanol extract, right? But I will talk more about like the LH and progesterone in just a moment. So this was in female rats. The point of why I'm including this is because it still enhances reproductive function, the function of the ovaries, which is also known as the gonads, and the main taste, this is also known as the gonads. So if it can enhance the ovarian function, it can also enhance testicular function. So it increases LH and progesterone and restores estradiol levels. So we have the LH, which was then, and these animals were diabetic. So a D for diabetic, and then they were given low dose, medium dose, and high dose of the Vitex. So we have LH dropped in diabetes, and then completely restored and increased by Vitex. We have progesterone decreased, but then massively increased over baseline uh, by the Vitex, and then estradiol decreased, but then being restored. So it's not increasing your estradiol over the normal range, it's just restoring it, which is good. You need, at least females need, estradiol in optimal ranges. And maybe if you have low estradiol levels, this might be good for you too. Massive increase in progesterone in females without affecting testosterone in males. So this was in chimpanzees that was feeding on the Vitex berries um, during the season. So this was like a six month season of Vitex berry consumption. And this was six months after the consumption. So urinary progestins massively increased. They were increasing progesterone significantly in the females. Estrogen didn't change. And then also testosterone didn't change in the males. So it, at least this study is showing that the massive consumption of Vitex berries is not increasing testosterone. At least you can see there's a mild increase in testosterone in chimpanzees, male chimpanzees. In terms of prolactin, this specific extract of Vitex increased prolactin in low dose, but lowered it in high dose. And I'm going to show exactly like why that is happening. So here you can see area under the curve. So when you look at a total daily or let's say a six hour period, you see the increase and you see the decrease. Like that time period is area under the curve. So this is area under the curve of placebo of prolactin. You can see it increased with a low dose prolactin and then decreased in the high dose of Vitex. And here is the prolactin daily rhythm. 
right? So it's quite normal during the day, and then it seems to spike during the evening. And then when you use a Vitex, it lowers that increase in prolactin that you get in the evening. And also it blunts a TRH induced increase in prolactin. So TRH is a hormone that stimulates the pituitary, the anterior pituitary to release TSH within similar to the thyroid gland to release your thyroid hormones. But T TRH also promotes the release of prolactin. So if you're hypothyroid, people that are hypothyroid tend to have higher levels of prolactin than those that are euthyroid because of higher levels of TRH. So Vitex can reduce the prolactin increase induced by TRH. Again, the higher the dose, the bigger decrease. So if someone is hypothyroid with hyperlactin, this might be a good supplement to use to bring down their prolactin. And the reason why it's actually increasing prolactin in a low dose is because there is a compound in Vitex that stimulates the dopamine receptor. Now you have the autoreceptor and you have the postsynaptic receptors. This is presynaptic because this is from the synaptic cleft where it's being released going to the postsynaptic, presynaptic, postsynaptic. All right, so you have the autoreceptor on the presynaptic neuron, and then you have the dopamine receptors on the postsynaptic. So if dopamine is stimulating the autoreceptor more than the postsynaptic receptor, the synthesis of dopamine decreases, right? So low dose stimulates presynaptic more than it's stimulating postsynaptic. So dopamine goes down, prolactin goes up. Whereas high doses stimulate the postsynaptic more than the presynaptic, and this lowers your prolactin. And then also Vitexin, which is a compound found in Vitex, is a monoamine oxidase B inhibitor. So it prevents the breakdown of dopamine. You end up with more dopamine, which helps you to feel good and lower your prolactin. So this is the mechanism how it both increases and lowers your prolactin in dose-dependent response. And then we also have a natural versus synthetic dopamine agonist. So side effects, which are often described after synthetic dopaminergic substances, has been administered include gastrointestinal symptoms such as feelings of pressure in the stomach, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, headache, tiredness, psychomotor agitation, and dryness of the mouth. And then no effect on blood pressure or heart rate, nor of the clinical chemistry, blood count, or hormones has been observed when you use a natural dopamine agonist. So when you use like a uh, carbogolin or bromocryptine or something that's like a synthetic dopamine compound, it's much more likely to cause side effects than when you were to use a natural dopamine compound like Vitex. It's also been shown to increase melatonin. A significant dose-dependent increase in the area under the curve of melatonin was observed. The pattern of the circadian rhythm of melatonin secretion was however not influenced. So during the day, when you should have low levels of melatonin, was not altered at all by Vitex, but only in the evening when you're supposed to sleep, did melatonin go up, which is very interesting. It's not going to make you sedated during the day, but it's going to help to sleep better at night. Then is Vitex estrogenic? Vitex contains estrogenic compounds that bind to the estrogen receptor beta, not the alpha. So according to the yin-yang theory of Gustafsson, the estrogen receptor alpha and beta have each other opposing effects. So the estrogen receptor alpha is what's responsible for the estrogenic effects of estrogen and other phytoestrogens. So if you bind to the estrogen receptor beta, it opposes that of the estrogen receptor alpha. And the estrogenic components in Vitex only bind to the beta receptor, not the alpha. So it's not going to be estrogenic. So estrogen receptor alpha is primarily, is present mainly in the memory gland, think gyno, the uterus, think also uterus enlargement, the ovaries, bone, male reproductive organs. So when you consume phytoestrogens, it's going to lower your testosterone, re-soy. Prostate, liver, and adipose tissue. By contrast, the estrogen receptor beta is found mainly in the prostate, so it helps against prostate cancer, bladder, ovaries, colon, adipose tissue, and immune system. So it's beneficial for the immune system. And also the DHT metabolite also binds to the estrogen receptor beta where it has anti-anxiety benefits. So DHT is broken down into 3-alpha and 3-beta diol. And the 3-beta diol binds to the estrogen receptor beta, which is how it has some of these anti-anxiety benefits which means that Vitex can have the same anti-anxiety benefits by binding to this specific receptor. It also seems to have pro-opioid effects, which means it helps against pain and helps to enhance mood. So the, specifically the methanol extract of Vitex has mu 
MU opioid binding activity and removing the fat in the vitex enhances it even further. So if someone is a diabetic with a half elevated levels of free fatty acids, that can blunt the effect of certain pro-opioid compounds, right? So op opioids can help to enhance orgasmic pleasure, can enhance your mood and so on. But on the flip side, an excess amount of opioids can lower your testosterone and also cause um, anorgasmia, which is a blunting of orgasm, which is also not good. It primarily affects nociception, but also stress, temperature, respiration, endocrine activity, gastrointestinal activity, memory, mood, and motivation. Right, so opioids can be extremely beneficial to make you feel good, but an excessive amount is not good. But I don't think that a Vitex is going to cause an excessive stimulation of the opioid receptor that's going to cause side effects. But just keep it in mind, if you do experience some of these side effects, it could be due to that. It's also been shown to lower inflammation. So uh, Vitex lowers inflammatory markers. We can see this is normal levels of interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, which is inflammatory markers. Inflammation, you can see a massive increase in these markers. This is the methanol extract, and this is diclofenac. Right, so if they compare it, how effective it was to like a standard synthetic drug that lowers inflammation, it was almost just as effective as diclofenac at reducing inflammatory markers. And this was the ethanol extract. So Vitex potently decreased TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. In this specific study, they used leaves, which was the most effective, and it was likely due to the camphorol, luthien, and p the hydroxybenzoic acid that was responsible for the anti-inflammatory effects. It also has antibacterial and antifungal benefits. So it kills various pathogens such as Staphylococcus aureus, which is involved in acne and dental caries, E. coli, Bacillus subtilis, Pseudomona, something else, I don't know, complicated bacteria name, and also Klebsiella. Like all of these are pathogenic bacteria that can contribute to infection and chronic inflammation. It has antifungal effects against Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus niger, Penicillium, whatnot, Candida albicans. So it has antibacterial and antifungal properties. It's antiviral against things like HIV and antiparasitic against various parasites. And this is how it can also affect other neurotransmitters as well. So it lowers the synthesis of acetylcholine, which might seem like a bad thing, but it's also good because an excessive amount of acetylcholine can also contribute to just feeling down, feeling antonic, and having muscle spasms, right? If your muscles are or just tense all the time, then something that lowers acetylcholine can be extremely helpful. Then it also inhibits the serotonin receptor 1A, which is an overstimulation of that receptor, contributes to premature ejaculation. So it could be possible that Vitex helps against premature ejaculation. I'm still to try that out, so I'll keep you guys posted if you follow me on X and also my newsletter. Special test to try safe for humans. So is Vitex safe for males to use? I would say so absolutely based on the evidence that suggests um, that exists. It does not lower testosterone, it can actually increase your testosterone. It does not increase prolactin, it can lower your prolactin, but the dose needs to be high enough for that to happen. On the flip side, inhibiting the dopamine receptor or acting on the presynaptic receptor can also actually help against premature ejaculation. So this might be interesting supplement to use in small doses that could help with premature ejaculation. So this might be a solid supplement to feel better, lower your prolactin, and potentially also increase your testosterone. And talking about testosterone, if you would like to maximize your testosterone, I have a free ebook link in the description below if you want to check that out. So I hope you learned something new, and I'll check you in the next one. Cheers, guys.